talking to Xaviero, it sounds as though your own childhood, your own background, has been, at least a once you left home, a happy one. Mind you, I was born in Indonesia in a concentration camp, so I have had three years of absolute solitude. But and and I, have, uh, nobody cried, when I, nobody listened when I cried. But when I grew up, my father and mother, my father was a fantastic bohemian intellectual creative. My mother was a faithful monogamous German, my father was Jewish, and I saw a lot of love. But I also saw that sexual tension and love had something to do with each other. My father was a bit like me, promiscuous. Had, he was a doctor. He sometimes maybe had a little affair. And my mother was hurt. She was very hurt. And there were big scenes, and there were big hysteric fights, and there were vases being thrown down. And I've seen my father cry, and I remember the moment that he cried behind his newspaper, or behind Dostoevsky, whatever he was reading. I, I felt like I melted. As you said earlier on, a man, to see a man cry, it's so unusual, and it's, it's your own father. And then I realized that between marriage and between people that love each other, there should be tension. And my mother always said, if you marry, don't take two twin beds. Always take a big bed, because no matter what fight you have, just a touch of the feet or a touch of the hand, that could make up. Don't ever go to bed mad. Now, if you just say, my wife is so beautiful, so wonderful, so feminine, don't tell me. There's a French expression, les gens heureux n'ont pas d'histoire. Happy people don't really have a story to tell. It gets very boring to be married for 30 years happily. So, don't tell me there's no tension or fights or arguments. So, Xavier, I after, love the, the, tension. after I the concentration camp, things clearly looked up, and you obviously... Yes found yourself and your own sexuality an independent movie, yeah. happily and independently. Let, let me ask Malcolm whether that was the same with you. Where and how did you start, apart from the obvious answer to that question? <laughs> What's your background? Uh, what you're principally asking is really how I was brought up. Yes. Uh, womanless views. Um, no, I think this I discussed with, with one of the girls earlier, um, and I think we're comparing it with the way you were brought up, but I was brought up. Uh, without any women yet, and so therefore, um, now, uh, at this age, uh, I, f I obviously find it difficult to understand women completely and things. Was it a happy obviously childhood? Obviously, going to help me out with this later. <laughs> <laughs> does, does, it, does it seem to you a satisfactory way for a child to be brought no, up I don't, without I don't, a, a mother? This is David saying about the family units. I think a family I is important. You know, it might obviously, let's say, if Zave and I were married, and we had a child, and, uh, and then say, I left, well, I, I, as long as there's another man say, to say we place it and play father, I just think it's important because uh, of the things I feel I missed out on, um, which is obviously... What? Uh, well, it's, it's a woman, woman's things Touch. and stuff like that, you know. Um, and, so I, you know, I, I find it difficult to explain... Oh, God, he's being so brutally honest here at the Crucible tonight. It's, uh, you know, it's difficult to, to express yourself properly, or for me, uh, with women, even though I'm saying, like, a long-term relationship, which might be... Long term, you know, one or two days. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, I meant like you know, three or four years. You know, you, and you actually know them. You know some of their habits and things like that. But it's still very difficult to express yourself completely, um, and and that's what, if you like, forms the initial seed that is the breakdown of that relationship in the end. You know, and I listened to some like, well, I suppose everybody's stories and how, like thirty years happily married and things. I mean, you know, I wish I could, but. I don't know I'm straying here. I think what I'm trying to say is that as far as the family unit goes, I think it's very important for, all, for both sexes, I'm going to say all, so there's only two, but for both the sexes to understand who the other sexes are throughout their childhood and things. Because now, I'm trying to think of some um, uh, broadcastable anecdotes that would, uh, <laughs> that would point out uh, what I'm trying to say, but I've, uh, if you like, I've just stopped going out with uh, uh, a, a, a girl, a very beautiful girl, a very talented girl, and a career girl, you know, and she's, she's absolutely superbly talented. Okay, Vange, dinner on Sunday. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but our relationship, if you like, broke down basically because of me. You know, obviously she, she had something to do with it in the sense of the way she'd react to the way I was reacting. But in principle, it was the way I am with women, you know. Which is? Um, oh, come on, I'm not going to tell you now. Oh, I think, you know? are, you are you frightened of women, Mark? Well, I think that when, uh, yeah, I, I am actually, yeah. Which is why I kick their heads in, you know. Right. <laughs> so you, so you're, you're, you're saying ma the macho response, in fact, is a kind of violent response, no, perhaps. No, uh, I've, 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 not, fear and I've never been violent towards women, right. just to pick up on that word macho. I mean, uh, I've been brought up with men, you know, I've been brought up in a jock strap, so to speak, you know. Um, you know, I love my Guinness and, and you know, I'm, if you like, a man's man to a degree who, who's, uh, I don't know, fatally in love with women. I mean, I love women, I love being with them, but uh, I, it's difficult to express yourself uh, personally to them because, you know, maybe I'm scared. I don't, if I knew 
what it was, then it it'd no longer be a problem, you know. But to, you know, to try and to tell them things or to do things because and stuff. There's like a very nice poem. You're quoting Victorian poetry earlier. There's a nice po poem by Coventry Patmore, which goes something like this: "A woman is another country, which though there, he, though there he settled young, a man will never quite un never understand the customs." Uh, language or uh, customs, habits or tongue, I can't be exactly right. Mm. But um, are you in that situation that you're a woman in another country which you don't fully understand and feel alien or restaurants, in? restaurants. Yeah, the... No, uh, <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Uh, no, it's difficult to say because I've travelled a lot and I, I love other cultures and stuff, meeting other people. I don't, you see, this is the whole, once again, three people have said if I knew what the problem was, it'd be maybe easy to solve. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's like, um, if I were to go home with you tonight and, and we had a relationship that lasted, I don't know, say six months, then then you could tell me. Actually, you'd probably tell me after six seconds, but but, but then <laughs> you know, but, but then you'd be able to say, I don't know. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, um, w you must always remember. And I know this this is right. If if anybody in a relationship, whether it's dykes or or, or gay boys or uh, men and women, if anybody in those relationships can't express themselves properly, then obviously there's going to be some form of breakdown. You know, uh, and this this always happens. And to me, this is what highlights the difference between men and women, men and women, in the way they can um, uh, communicate. Com communicate with each other. You know, but uh, for instance, if like, um, and uh, well, let, let's make something up here, shall we? If uh, a friend of mine can only make love for thirty seconds before the orgasms, that's yeah? him. That's, that's him. a friend of mine. Yeah? <laughs> that's that's and, all, um, tell all the same. <laughs> So, you so were only out for twenty. I was watching. I was watching. I was admit. Yeah. But, but no, but, but if you know, if, if that's if that's the case, then uh, then he obviously then, and I don't think it's anything to do with macho, but he obviously then realizes, except for the foreplay, that he's not stimulating his woman, which is something he wants to do, and so really uh, he has to, he has a terrible problem that he has to communicate. Now, if he can't do that. If he doesn't trust her enough, if he doesn't understand uh, his woman enough, then that will never happen and their relationship will break down because she'll want the Brixton Street hockey team to come on in and, uh, and, f and fulfil her boots, you know, I think, you know. And more than that. <laughs> and more than that, yeah. With Xavier? Yes. Well, what this advice, is where I come what in, advice Andy, would you give on your chat talk, you know? And this is why we went to the toilets, actually, I must say, you know. <laughs> what advice would you give, quick, Xavier? Yeah, yeah, well... <laughs> I think what, this is exactly what goes wrong in a lot of relationships, marriages. People don't communicate. People don't dare to express, both men as well as women. If you only know how many women are made love to brutally or by people, I wouldn't say like you, like your friend, who just... I had clients as a happy hooker. I had clients who'd come to me, my wife is a frigid, uh, she's uh, dead in bed. And uh, I would have sex. I wouldn't call that making love. I'd have sex with men. He would be one, two, three, one, slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. No and I'd say, well, no complain. wonder your wife exactly. complains. <laughs> and I'd give the man two choices because, you know, a man goes to a hooker, to a prostitute for his ego. You know, he wants to say, honey, you're a, am I good enough? I'd say, no, you're a lousy lay. Actually, what you have to do is shave up. And there are certain techniques also, apart from the love and the emotions, there are just certain techniques, the cult of the green and red light technique. Masters and Johnson wrote a whole book about it, how you can prevent somebody from coming too quick. But there's also other things. It's called foreplay, not just the talk, but also taking care of the... A, a lot of men, and I'm generalizing, but it's true, unfortunately, a lot of men are underbelly oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the case also with homosexuals. Homosexual men, making love to homosexual men in general is something that comes from the underbelly. Whereas lesbians or women and men, women like to be made love all over. Their whole body is like an erogenous zone. From the earlobe to the neck to a touch, mm -hmm. to a squeeze, uh, to the foot under the table. It's, it's an art. It's the art of loving. And what I like about young men, you, how old are you? 16. Oh, that's just because it's not. What I like, what I like about young men is when they're still impressionable and young and like, a, like an unwritten sheet, they maybe probably not have too much to say about life, but I have double as much to say, is that I'd like to teach them the art of living as well as the art of loving. It's, it's creating an ambiance. A part of loving is if you like, say, classical music or you like, uh, name any kind of music. I prepare a tape. If you say I like that kind of food, I would prepare the whole evening around it. But sometimes it works out differently. Sometimes somebody else walks in and, and the mood has changed. But it's Especially nice. If it's the police. Yeah, it's the police <laughs> coming in or so. But it's the preparation that's important. Now, in your case, I've been doing an agony column for a major man's magazine for almost 20 years in America. And now I'm hopefully going to do this in England in a newspaper. A major problem is that a lot of men don't dare to talk to their own girlfriends, their own wives, but they need some 
other than somebody else other than a psychiatrist or psychologist. So why not write or call the number or uh, sort of anonymity of being on a phone where people don't see you? That's a problem. A lot of men don't dare to let out. It's their problem. But if you call up anonymous, anonymously, then there's some you create a tension. It's the voice. You know, it's it's like a darkness. And then you can be more open. And if that other person is not just a tape talking to you, you know, not just giving you some, some story, but is really answering you, then you'd have at least some kind of help. I have people repeat business that call me back yeah, and back. Mm. Yes. David. <laughs> 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 we should have a tete-a-tete after. I was, I was very interested to hear your...